show that the limit as xy goes to 0, 0 of xy over x squared plus y squared does not exist. So our approach is going to be like this. If this limit exists, I can take any curve in the xy plane that goes through 0, 0. If we take the limit along that curve as we go to 0, 0, that's always going to give me the same number. So what we're going to do is I'll find two curves. We'll use the lines y equals x, y equals 2x, and then we'll show that we get different answers as we go along those curves. So what happens if we go along y equals x? Then I'm looking at the limit x, y going to 0, 0 along y equals x of x squared over x squared plus x squared. So we clean things up. That's just going to be the limit of 1 half. And so that's going to be our answer. If I go along y equals 2x, we have 2x squared over x squared plus 4x squared. That's going to go to 2 fifths. And we see these limits are not equal. Therefore, the limit in general does not exist. To get a better idea of what's happening, let's switch to polar coordinates. So x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. We stick into our function. When we simplify, we get cosine theta, sine theta. Two things to note. First, cosine theta, sine theta is always between minus 1 and 1. So our function's bounded on the entire xy plane, except at 0, 0, where it's not defined. Next, we're going to have our function doesn't depend at all on r, the radius. It only depends on the angle. So if I take an angle, take the ray going from the origin out along our angle, okay, that ray, our function is going to be constant on that ray. So putting these two together, we see that we don't have a discontinuity like we would in the single variable case. There, if I have a discontinuity that I can't fix by taking a limit, we're either looking at a jump discontinuity, which is like a tear in the graph, a vertical asymptote, again, a tear in the graph, or horrifying oscillation. If we take a look at what's happening in the picture, so what can we do? So let's suppose, okay, we have positive x, positive y, positive z, and I just chop a little bit off that tip so we can see what's happening. So as I come along the origin, theta equals zero, okay, that value is gonna be zero, so this is coming in along the axis. So that wants to go to zero. Pi halves, same idea. That's coming in, okay, this is gonna be zero. That's gonna come into the origin, making the function wanna be equal to zero. If I take pi fourths, okay, that's gonna give me square root of two over two times square root of two over two, gives me a half. So as this comes in along pi fourths, that wants to be one half. You'll notice as you come in along all these other angles, okay, it's just gonna go from zero to one half, depending on the direction you pick, and then back from one half down to zero, as you keep going down. So you'll notice this thing wants to be all values between zero and a half at once. So there's no way you're gonna have a best fitting point at zero, zero.